this road trip. Hi, everybody. Brian Anderson, Bill Schroeder. Great to have you with us. Craig Kashan is our reporter. We'll hear from him in just a bit. And, Rock, I guess first up, it's Matt Garza. He gets to start today, and he's the one that gets to deal with all of this madness behind us. Yeah, and that's why you have veterans on your pitching staff. Matt Garza is certainly the guy that can handle the pressure. Of course, when all this is over with, it's just a baseball game at 315, making his 11th start career against St. Louis at 3-3 three and three record. His last time out here at Bush Stadium, Last year, he was pitching a shutout through six innings, and he was throwing the baseball extremely well. He had to come out due to injury. He's only throwing a one-hitter at that point in time. Good slider. He really did not have a very good breaking pitch in his first time out against the Colorado Rockies. That's going to have to change here today. It'll be Garza's second start of the season, so, yes, he does have good pitching memories here, maybe not uh, good health memories here. All right, his mound opponent is Adam Wainwright because there was a postponement due to weather in Chicago. Wainwright didn't pitch yesterday. He gets the Cardinals home opener today. Yeah, and probably the best pitcher in baseball that has never won a Cy Young Award. For the last five years when he was pitching, he's been in the top three in Cy Young voting. Early in his career was Chris Carpenter winning all the awards. Now it's Clayton Kershaw, but this guy, no doubt one of the best in the business, a 20-game winner from a year ago. And you see the numbers where he ranks since 2009. You can just say it. He has been one of the elite pitchers in the game. Most wins, most innings, most shutouts since 2009. And he's done great work in the postseason as well. We're going to talk catchers. Got two great ones here, Molina and Luke Croy, two all-stars. We'll send it back to the studio with Jeff and Augie right after this.
Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Buy Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. And by Miller Lite, the original Lite Pilsner. Cheers. It's Miller time. Greg Kishon back with you in St. Louis, Milwaukee, and the Cardinals open up this ballpark back in 2006, and they're ready to go back at it here today. The first matchup of the season between these two clubs. The Brewers are uh, just at the beginning stages of a 22-game stretch against divisional foes. How important is it to win these games? Look no further than what the Cardinals were able to put together when the Brewers hit some hard times towards the end of last season. They won seven of the final nine games against these two ball clubs. So Jonathan Lucroy tells us how important it is to win these division games starting now. I think top to bottom, it's the best division in baseball. Top to bottom. I mean, the Cubs are really good with the signing of Lester, you know, and, uh, you know, they brought on some other guys. So, you know, I really believe that uh, those guys are going to compete hard this year. You know, Cardinals are always going to be there. I think with, you know, their talent they have in their organization, plus on their big league team, I think they're really going to be around a lot. Uh, Pirates are always solid. You know, Reds, if they could stay healthy, they're going to be there too, you know. And so, uh, I mean, uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a battle, but honestly, I wouldn't have any other way because for me it makes it worth it whenever you beat those teams. Whenever you beat them and you earn your way past those teams, it really doesn't make it, you know, I don't, I don't like the easy route. I like the hard route. That might sound kind of weird, but, you know, I, li I like taking the, the harder challenge because it's more satisfying in the end. Well, it's all about the competition. These guys are competitors. They want to play the best, beat the best, and they're going to start with Adam Wainwright. Of course, Milwaukee just coming off a series loss to Pittsburgh. They will face the Pirates again in Pittsburgh coming up after they're done with this series here in St. Louis. So a big road trip to start the 2015 season. Won't be easy for Milwaukee, but they got to be up for the task. they got to start turning around and getting some wins. Only a 1-5 start. We're coming right back. Garza versus Wainwright. Bien Rock standing by on the other side. Enjoy it.
Another strikeout for Peralta. And that one is hit deep. Davis sends one out of here. Two-run homer, Chris Davis. Luke Croy hits that one hard to center field. They all pitch. Jeanette lines one, center field, a base hit. Central Division rivals, Brewers, Cardinals, and Brewers Baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin, presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. We invite you to book your stay now. now just a moment ago, ceremonial first pitch. You see uh, Ron Renicki out there with David Bell, the bench coach, the umpiring crew, and two Cardinal legends, the wizard, Ozzie Smith, and Willie McGee doing the honors on this special day here in St. Louis. The Cardinals home opener. Perfect strike on the corner. Great outfielder he was. Willie McGee from the Whitey Ball era. Ozzie Smith and Willie McGee got a great hand. And now the Cardinals hit the field behind their ace. Adam Wainwright. Brewers have been uh, wading through this ceremony. It's very good ceremony. It's always fun to see a, a ceremony, even when you're the visiting team. The Brewers actually experienced three different opening day ceremonies last year. This is the second one this season. And uh, Craig Kishon, you're down there. What have the Brewers been doing to occupy their time during the pomp and circumstance? Well, you know, there, there's not a whole lot to do except try to soak it in and enjoy it. They, uh, they've kind of been standing around for about 15 minutes, all said. But here's the thing. Just watching them go out there and line up they had the ball eagle fly around they had a beautiful national anthem here I mean let's face it there's no sport that does opening day better than baseball and if you're a traditionalist or you're playing the game you can't help but soak it in and enjoy it and I guarantee you even as the road team here they they have enjoyed this so far now they want to go out and win a ball game yeah very well put they had a, a moving tribute as well a video memorial to Oscar Tavares uh, before the game and there are a lot of Brewers players that are from the Dominican Republic and uh, very close with Oscar as well and it was a touching for them as well so all of that is over and we are finally set for baseball and Ron Renneke and the Brewers ready to match up against Mike Matheny's Cardinals this is the Potawatomi lineup for Renneke today Gomez, Lucroy, Braun at the top Adam Lind, Aramis Ramirez, Chris Davis in the middle, Segura Back in the seventh spot, Jeanette back in the starting lineup, and Matt Garza will oppose Adam Wainwright. Set for the game's first pitch. Wainwright against Carlos Gomez, and a big swing and a miss, and away we go from Bush Stadium. First pitch comes at 3.20 Central Time. Little cue shot out to second base. Bobbled out there. And the Brewers are going to get a base runner to start it. Wong couldn't handle the hop, and Gomez will reach. Yep, little key shot. Adam Wainwright not afraid to come inside. He will do that quite a bit. He jams Gomez, and this looked like a pretty routine ground ball, but kind of a funny spin on it comes up on Wong, and now the Brewers get an early base runner. So an inauspicious start for the St. Louis Cardinals. And an error to begin the game will send Jonathan Lucroy to the plate with the speedy Gomez at first base. You'll take your base runners when you can get them on Adam Wainwright. He was fantastic against the Chicago Cubs in his first start of the year. But that was Sunday week ago, Rock. That was back on April 5th, the first game of the season in Major League Baseball. Sunday night, he went six shutout innings. Yeah, picking up right where he left off a year ago. I mean, one of the game's best. He's 20. And nine last year with a 380, or I should say a 238 earned run average. Wainwright had to be shut down early in the spring. He actually came back to St. Louis to check on his pitching arm. Everything was okay with the medical test and he was able to make it back by opening day although he got a late start to the spring as he misses down and in to Jonathan Lucroy two balls and a strike I would imagine for a starting pitcher going through the opening day procedure is uh, the biggest challenge Wainwright's done it before and because of weather in Chicago at a postponement on Tuesday Wainwright's able to make this start for the Cardinals home opener yeah his fourth 
home opener as a St. Louis Cardinal. So, yeah, he's used to it. Lucroy down the right field line. That is down foul. Just missed an extra base hit. Yeah, they have to start falling for Lucroy at some point. I mean, doing a nice job taking that baseball to the opposite field. That ball drops. That's a run because Carlos Gomez was nearly at third base when he stopped running. Yeah, foul by about a, about three feet. Lucroy has started the season with just one hit in his first 20 at bats. At the day off yesterday, Martin Maldonado caught Kyle Loesch yesterday. Brewers dropped a series to the Pirates, dropped two out of three. Yeah, and when your guys in the middle of the order not really getting it done quite yet, Lucroy, Braun, Ramirez. Of course, Adam Lynn's been swinging the bat well. You don't have to dig too deep to determine why the Brewers have not been able to score a lot of runs. Final score in yesterday's game, not indicative of the type of game it was. Pittsburgh scored six unearned runs in their final at bat. And the Brewers dropping to one and five with the loss yesterday. A final score yesterday of 10 to two. Brewers only win came Saturday, a 6 nothing shutout victory over Pittsburgh. And Renneke's hoping his road trip's going to get them going a little bit. They need to start winning games in bunches and try to salvage April. There's still time. Gomez takes off, pitches in the dirt, and Lucroy draws the walk. And a very unusual start for a Adam Wainwright game, error walk. That pitch wasn't even close. Well, they tried to throw a curveball and just spiked away in front of home plate. Let's check out the Cardinals' defense. In the outfield, you got Holiday, Jay, and Hayward. Hayward, the new acquisition in the offseason. You got Carpenter, Peralta, Wong, and Adams from third to first. And Yadier Molina behind home plate. The uh, much trimmer version of Yadier Molina. Yeah, he's down 30 pounds from last season. Had an injured thumb last year, tore ligaments in that thumb. Knocked him out of a good chunk of the second half. First and second, nobody out. Here's Ryan Braun. Well, the Brewers know as well as anyone that if you're going to get Wainwright, you usually get him early. So this is a golden opportunity in the first inning of this game. And this is where the Brewers have had a difficult time in executing, getting men on base, advancing base runners. You're right. I mean, situations like this don't come up all that often with Wainwright on the mound. I'll be curious to watch Wainwright today because he did get a late start to his spring training rock. And then so he hustles back to be ready for opening day, which he was. And then because of the postponement in uh, Chicago, he is on the mound for the first time since Sunday week ago. Yeah. So it's been a good long stretch between starts for Adam Wainwright. Yeah, a little extra time. And a lot of times pitchers don't like that. They like to be on that every fifth day routine. And struggling with his command in a big way right now, down in the count to Ryan Braun, 2 0. He has racked up the innings, and including postseason innings, and the Cardinals have been in the postseason each of the last four seasons. No one has thrown more innings than Adam Wainwright. He has been a workhorse. Braun had a big cut, fouls it back. Two balls and a strike on Ryan. Yeah, 227 innings in the regular season last year. Last year, the Brewers were 7 and 12 against St. Louis. 4 and 5 here at Bush Stadium. Renicky knows this is the team you have to beat if you're going to win the division as Braun takes a ball and it's 3 and 1. Adam Lynn to follow his third consecutive start in the cleanup spot in the batting order. Hitters count two on nobody out Brewers looking for a fast start here today.
It's been a slow start for Ryan Braun as well. Just three hits in his first 14 at bats. Hits that one high in the air, center field. Back is Jay. Gomez and Lucroy will both tag. Gomez will advance. Lucroy stays put. Yeah, Braun able to advance uh, Carlos to third base, but disappointing. Had a 3 1 fastball to hit, and it got in on him a little bit. Popped it up, he hit it well, but got under it. First out of the ball game for Adam Wainwright. Yeah, those are the pitches right there where, you know, Ryan Braun, when he's going well, he hits him a long way. Fastball out over the plate. So one away, first and third now. And here is Adam Lind. Lind, what a start. Nine hits in his first six games. He's nine for 20. He's been on base in all six games. Coming to the Brewers from the Blue Jays in a trade with uh, Marco Estrada. Yeah, big cut and a miss. Adam Lind has only faced Adam Wainwright twice in his career. He's two for two, and one of those hits is a home run. And he's got a nice swing. He's been swinging the bat well. He's even looked pretty good against left-handed pitching. And that was a concern. Mm -hmm. Three of his hits have come against lefties this season. As Lind pulls one to the right side. Wong to second for one out. That's all they'll get. And the Brewers score first. Gomez, who reached on an error, comes in to score. And an RBI for Adam Lind. Well, you take him when you can get him. The Brewers are hoping for a big inning. Of course, they still can. But first and second, nobody out. Wainwright able to get a couple of outs, but a run does cross home plate. There's that fastball up and in. And Lynn likes the ball down the strike zone. He's got that pure left-hander swing that ball just jumps off his bat when it's downstairs. Two gone. Here is Ramirez now. Now well, Ramos has had pretty good success against Adam Wainwright throughout his career. Well, let's look at our DraftKings player to watch. It would be Ramirez. Played daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com. The official daily fantasy partner of Major League Baseball. Enter promo code CREW. Yeah, this is the 61st at bat between Ramirez and Wainwright. A little bit of history there and a 383 batting average with three home runs. Very impressive numbers against one of the game's best pitchers during this era. One ball, one strike. Lind over at first. And Ramirez fouls one off Molina. That got him good. Yeah, the slim down version of Yadier Molina. Hardly looks like the same guy. Not slim enough. This one gets him right mm. on the inside of the knee. Ouch. Yeah, there's a padding there, but not much. And those hurt, I can tell you. Bingo. Well, that feels like somebody just shoots you in the in the knee. It goes away though. Molina directing traffic from behind the plate. One of the best in the business back there. One and two on Ramirez. And Aramis just stays alive. Just got a piece of it. That's that patented Adam Wainwright curveball. He's got a good one. He left that one up in his zone. Another two strike pitch coming. And Ramirez strikes out. The inning is over. A promising start with an error and a walk. The Brewers do get one. Matt Garza toes the rubber next. Got a lead to work with.
St. Louis and the Brewers scoring an unearned runoff. Adam Wainwright have a one nothing lead. Cardinals are coming up. There is skipper Mike Matheny the former Brewer catcher now in his fourth season as the Cardinals manager and he's been to the postseason each and every year as the Cardinals skipper went to the NLCS last year. Take a look at Matheny's Pottawatomie lineup. Matt Carpenter leads off. Very good leadoff hitter. Jason Hayward, the newcomer, bats second. Matt Holliday bats third with Matt Adams, Johnny Peralta, and John Jay in the middle of the order. Yadier Molina, Colton Wong, and Adam Wainwright round out Matheny's nine for the St. Louis Cardinals. And Matt Garza looking for a bounce back start after really kind of a rough outing his first time out at Miller Park against the Colorado Rockies. Five innings. The pitch count got him. Gave up four earned runs and talking to and reading some of the things about Garza and in talking to some of the Brewer coaches didn't really have his good slider that particular day. And there was some talk about Garza tipping pitches. The Colorado Rockies maybe knowing what's coming. Conversation there with Matheny and Bill Welke, the home plate umpire. Ron Renneke also had a conversation with Bill Welke while we were away at commercial break. So not sure what that's all about, but something's got the Brewers skippers attention and away we go here Bill Welke James Hoy John Hirschbeck is the crew chief John Tempain is the other base umpire over a third Garza's first pitch Carpenter takes a strike Matt Carpenter one of the premier leadoff hitters in the game hit a game winning two run home run yesterday in extra innings against Cincinnati an 11th inning home run for Carpenter as he lashes that one to center, but right at Gomez for the first out. Yeah, good quality leadoff hitter, Matt Carpenter makes good contact. Doesn't run all that well, but he's got always has a good on base percentage. Let's check out the Menards Brewers defense. Got Chris Davis, Carlos Gomez, and Ryan Braun in the outfield. Ramirez, Segura, Jeanette back in the starting lineup, and Adam Lind at first, and Jonathan Lucroy back behind home plate. Last year's all-star starting catcher in the National League. Got some new uh, catching gear, too. Big hand for Jason Hayward, his first Cardinal at bat here in St. Louis. Well, Hayward locks down that right field position. Off-season trade between the Cardinals and the Atlanta Braves. Shelby Miller, the key piece going from St. Louis to Atlanta. Grounded to third base. Ramirez will make the play for out number two. Adds an element of speed to that Cardinals lineup that really doesn't exist except for Colton Wong. David will steal your base once in a while, and he's a terrific defender in the outfield. Two quick outs for Carpenter, or rather for uh, Garza. Carpenter and Hayward. Retired. And here is Matt Holiday. Still as powerful as ever. Holiday's off to a good start this season at the plate. Cardinals are not a team that hits. A ton of home runs. They uh, do not rely on the home run ball. Let's put it that way. But uh, Holiday still has the big power threat in their lineup. He and Matt Adams. Ballpark plays big typically, especially this time of year. Now it'll play a little smaller, more home run friendly when it heats up here in St. Louis. But this is a pitcher's park. He has a, a fair ballpark, power alleys. It takes something to get them out of here. Get them down the lines a little bit different, like it is in every ballpark. Holiday entering his 12th year in the big leagues. He's had some big home run seasons while he was in Colorado. He had a couple of years where he hit more than 30 home runs had a 36 homer season. In 2007 finished second in the MVP voting that year. That's the year he drove in 137 and led the league. Went from the Rockies to the A's in 09 in a trade and then. Came to St. Louis in uh, 2009 and a silent leader, a guy that's going to be out there every day. Not a rah-rah guy, but he leads by example. 
St. Louis hoping to do with Hayward what they did with Holiday and so many others. Guys like Scott Rowland and Jim Edmonds. Get him here in the final year of a contract. Let them experience St. Louis and the winning ways that they are so proud of in this environment here in St. Louis and then hope to re-sign him to a long-term multi-year contract. And that's been a pretty good formula for them. And maybe at a discount to stay here, right? Holiday can certainly speak to Hayward about that. He is signed through next season as Garza issues a walk. Well, you don't want to do that with this guy coming up, Matt Adams. Uh, Adams has owned Matt Garza in his career. Gaudy numbers for Matt Adams against Matt Garza. Adams does have a homer. One of his two hits this season. Mark Reynolds is here in St. Louis now. The former Brewer from last year is part of the mix at first base. When they set Adams, it is Reynolds who plays first, and he got the call yesterday. Cardinals throw out a lot of lefties. They have five lefties in their regular lineup. And uh, most of those lefties, all of those lefties, face left-handed starting pitchers yeah. as well. Consistent in that lineup. You're right. Ground ball. Big shift on. Back in the grass is Jeanette and Garza. Makes it a clean first inning, a scoreless inning. Off and running here in St. Louis. Their opening day. one nothing crew. and Casino. The Brewers here to open up the second inning, playing with the lead for only the third time this year. And Ron Reddick, he knows his offense has to get it going up, but going up against this tough St. Louis pitching staff won't be easy. Four starters already with quality starts. But he said, you know what the Brewers have to do? Their pitching has to match what's going on out there as well. He said, we're going to face these guys all season long. We have to beat them to win our division. And he says, uh, our pitchers just simply have to match what they're doing out there. Pitching is going to be huge in the division. And he said, if you can't pitch well on the other side, we're going to have a tough time. No doubt about that. And you know the experience that you have with this Brewer ball club. I mean, the better the pitchers, the better these hitters seem to go. It's the guys they've never seen before. That give them problems. I think every team is like that, but guys like Wainwright, I mean, 12 and 7 against Wainwright, not too bad. And considering how good he's been, and look at this, Chris Davis just continues to stay right on the baseball. A cut fastball right back through the middle. And just out of the reach of Wong, he was playing to shift up the middle. A good start for Davis this year. He has seven hits already. Seven for 23 at the plate. He is aboard to start the inning, and here is Gene Segura. If you're just picking us up, 
early afternoon game here in St. Louis the Cardinals home opener they started on the road in Chicago and Cincinnati Cardinals won three out of five on their road trip they lost one of their games due to weather in Chicago Brewers coming at one and five Segura in the right center field well hit Hayward the gold glover can't make the play and now Davis tries to get it cranked up. He is around third, will be held there. Mm. Gene Segura sends one deep to right center. I'll tell you, that ball was uh, traveling pretty well. I mean, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of breeze blowing out toward right. Flag's kind of just laying flat. But that ball, normally caught by Hayward, we just got done talking about what a good defender he is, took a very poor route on it and actually. That baseball got him on the on the heel of the glove. That'll be a double, but a ball that should have been caught out there in right field. That's not a very good route by Hayward, and he's normally the guy that is the symbol of good routes on the defensive metrics and some of the video metrics that you have when they they measure route running and how much wasted motion. Right, and uh, he's usually one of the best. He's got a couple of Gold Gloves as well, but. Misplayed that one. It goes as a double, and the Brewers are cooking again here in the second inning. A ton of base runners already against Adam Wainwright as Scooter Jeanette takes a ball. Yeah, defense very poor for the Cardinals so far today. Got to take advantage. This is a big at bat right here. You got the pitcher on deck. An error by Wong in the first led to a first inning run. Jeanette. Q's one foul. Scooter back in the starting lineup here today after two days out of the lineup. Renicky didn't want to go as far as say it was a disciplinary measure, but he felt like the way Scooter was pressing and the showing some of his frustration, he was ejected on Friday night. Felt like he needed to step back and maybe get a little different perspective. He did come in yesterday and had a pinch hit base hit. Sometimes that stuff goes a long way with the young player. That and the fact that uh, Hector Gomez had a pretty good night, got another start to, uh, in yesterday's game. Yeah, Gomez had three hits in his two starts. Hector Gomez, all doubles. Key at bat early. We're uh, getting a few here early in this game against Wainwright. Cardinals are going to concede the run here, playing their infield back. Scooter's got to put one in play somewhere. Second and third, nobody out. And Jeanette, a foul tip, just got a piece. And it's that Wainwright curveball. It's a good one. It's one of those spike curveballs, and he gets good bite on it, goes straight down. This is where the old ground ball to second base goes a long way. If you're going to make an out, you score the run, and you advance Segura to third base. We saw Chris Davis do that a couple of days ago. Inning has started with back to back hits, a single and a double. And Jeanette, a grounder to short. This will get the run in. Peralta makes a play. Scooter Jeanette with an RBI. And it's two to nothing, Brewers. Right, you put it in play, you score a run. Ideally, you hit it to the right side, but that's nothing wrong with that. Jeanette able to stay on it and drive in the run with a ground ball. Well, just score every inning and you'll be all right. Sounds easy, doesn't it? <laughs> Here's Matt Garza with Davis at second base. And he's trying to bunt him to third. They're going to play that one. So Garza gets the job done. A sacrifice bunt, advancing Segura to third. But there are two outs. Top of the order coming up. Here comes Gomez. Well, Carlos Gomez got into the act yesterday after swinging out of his helmet. The next swing he took ended up in the bleachers. A 420-foot blast power ball home run number one for Carlos Gomez. Joining Segura and Adam Lind, those who have homered so far this season. And the Brewers are built to hit home runs. When they hit home runs, they ordinarily win. Did not yesterday. Gomez sounded like he broke his bat right to Wong and Wainwright is out of the inning. So second and third nobody out the Brewers managed to squeeze one out of it. Two nothing Milwaukee.
Version 3, packed house opening day here. The Brewers have a 2-0 lead, trying to keep them quiet here in the early going. Cardinals are coming up. Our carsuit.com trivia question today. Which starting pitcher led the 81 Brewers in wins and was tied for the team lead with the 79 Cardinals? Good question. A little Brewer-Cardinal tie there. Matt Garza in his second season with Milwaukee. Was a member of the Cubs, traded to the Rangers two years ago, and then signed a four-year deal with the Brewers prior to last season. It's the largest contract ever signed by a pitcher in franchise history. For games just like this, Johnny Peralta starts it, singles back up the middle, and the Cardinals have their first hit. Johnny Peralta, one of the few Cardinals that will hack on that first pitch. He doesn't mind it at all. That was a fastball from Garza, middle in. Jammed himself, but able to muscle it into center field. Johnny Peralta hit a big two-run homer yesterday that tied the game. The Cardinals winning in extra innings in Cincinnati. That was a 7-5 win yesterday. Peralta... Always been a good hitter against Matt Garza. His average up over 400 against him in his career. Here's John Jay. Jay's got some company in the outfield this season. Opens the year as the starter in center field, but the Cardinals are very high on Randall Grichuk. Probably see a lot of him. In this series as well, if not in the starting lineup, then off the bench. Right, young man has a lot of power. Cardinals feel as though he has he's got more power than anybody in their lineup. Now that's saying something. Pretty good defender. He's got a good arm. Well, John Jay with great numbers against Matt Garza. Pretty good sample size too. He's eight for thirteen with a homer. Remember Garza pitching in the Central Division with the Cubs. For a few years. And then last year as a Brewer. Garza never really enjoyed success here at Bush Stadium until that start last August. As Jay lines one to left, Davis almost in his tracks will make the catch for the out. One away. Hey, tomorrow is Milwaukee Day, and while you may not get 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 the day off from work and get tickets to the Brewers' upcoming series against the Reds for just four bucks. Four dollars and fourteen cents. For more details on this special one-day sale, visit Brewers.com slash four one four. You get it? Four dollars and fourteen cents. April 14th. Four one four. Which is the area code, right? You're just tying it all together. It's amazing. Is that a real thing? That's marketing, man. Uh, yeah, it's gotta be some marketing guy somewhere, some some lady. In Milwaukee. Yeah. Where did that come from? I'd love to know the origin of that. That was got to be a brewer guy, doesn't it? Has that been a thing for a while? Guy or girl? No, that's the first I've seen that. That's why I kind of stumbled through the first couple of sentences. Normally, I... Oh, oh is that why? Yeah. This time, anyway. <laughs> when the new ones pop up, I like yeah, to take I mean, a look you at know, it. Gonna, you know? <laughs> it's first day in, I can understand. Yadier Molina bats with one away. Well, he is strikingly different looking this year compared yeah. to last. I mean, that is an amazing transformation from one year to the next. And hope that it's going to be, uh, you know, the the trimmer bird is going to be easier on the knees. He's going to be able to play a little bit longer. It's always good for the health. Let's see how it uh, affects his performance. Yeah. Now, Molina had a tough time. Throwing out base runners in Cincinnati, specifically Billy Hamilton, who stole seven bases in that series. Already has seven bags for the season. Garza looking for a double play ball here. Molina hits into a lot of those. He's been a clutch hitter, Molina. And he's packed a little punch. He was voted in as the all star starter behind the plate once again last year, but he was injured. Tore ligaments in that thumb sliding into third base. And uh, that's why Lucroy, who made the all-star team, was elevated 
as the starter at the All Star game. And then they added Devin Mezzarocco, another Central Division catcher. Yeah, everybody thought the Cardinals would go into the tank with Molina out of the lineup. They didn't. I mean, they played pretty well. Got to give them a lot of credit. They won the division. They hung in there without Molina. Four consecutive playoffs. Been a two World Series in that span. They won it in uh, 2011. And since 2000, this era of Cardinal baseball, they have 11 trips to the postseason. That's a called strike three. Molina is rung up by Bill Welke for the second out. Yeah, good slider. That's the pitch that he had trouble with in his first start. Slider wasn't doing much. There it is. Not much of a break, but very late. And put it right on that outside corner. That's a nice pitch. Well, you love the way Luke Croy catches those pitches as well. Yeah, one of the best framers in, in baseball. Just those little subtle movements, right? Makes them look good. Makes those pitches on the corners look good. I like that catching gear, too. So two outs. First K for Garza, and he faces the eighth-place hitter, Colton Wong. Wong with five hits in his first five games. Does have an RBI on the season. And for a second baseman, he's got some pop in his bag. He will hit a home run for you. Got to be careful, particularly on the inside part of the plate. Had a two homer game against Milwaukee in his career. He is from Honolulu, Hawaii. Played his college ball at the University of Hawaii. Big time prospect coming up through their system. Finally got a chance to play every day last year and he ended up playing in 113 games last year was technically his rookie season even though he had played in 32 games the year before he finished third in the rookie of the year voting last season yep, not only a good defender he can run well, before Hayward came around he was really the only stolen base threat in the lineup and Hayward's not even going to run all that much. Mm -hmm. Runner at first, Peralta had a leadoff single. He's still at first. And that bounces in, takes a wild carom off of Lucroy. Peralta advances on a wild pitch. Yeah, good luck trying to block that. Yeah, way in front of home plate. You just hope for the best. And you have a pitch bounce this far in front of home plate. And he tried, squirts away, Peralta in scoring position. And a full count on Colton Wong. Pitcher on deck, be careful. So Wong draws the walk. Wasn't going to give him anything good to hit with Wainwright coming up. That's smart. And now Wainwright will bat with runners at first and second. Wainwright is a good hitter, but he's still a pitcher at the plate. Much easier way out of the inning without a run scoring with a guy like this as opposed to a position player. Yeah, a career 200 hitter, which is not bad. And likes to swing at that first pitch if memory serves. Most pitchers do. If, if you have any hitting skills at all, you're up there trying to get one you can handle. Shows bunt. Back is Ramirez. A bare hand pick up and throw, and it's in time. How about Wainwright trying to bunt his way on? Good play by Aramis Ramirez to end the inning. Scoreless inning for Garza. It's 2 nothing Brewers.
Robinson presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino and the Brewers have scored single tallies in each of the first two innings here on the Cardinals opening day. Well we have a matchup of two of the great catchers in all of baseball in Lucroy and Yadier Molina. Molina has been the gold standard but uh, you see where these two rank since 2013 and uh, these are offensive numbers but the idea that Lucroy could catch so much compared to Molina who is a workhorse among catchers in the National League. Yeah, Luke Roy really has improved. I mean, exponentially defensively, certainly not in the class of a Yadier Molina at this point, but uh, when you talk about offense, I think I'd take Luke Roy at this point. I mean, Molina's had some terrific seasons, but uh, Luke Roy potentially a 300 hitter. Luke Roy broke Molina's National League doubles record by a catcher last year, and then Luke Roy went on to. To break the major league record, which was held by Ivan Rodriguez, Pudge Rodriguez, the former Rangers catcher. No player in the history of the game, no catcher in the history of the game with more doubles in a season than Jonathan Lucroy. Quite an accomplishment. And Lucroy's been throwing the baseball well so far this year. And those have been quick, right on the money. He's thrown out two already. Maldonado's thrown out one as well. The Brewers are. Having a lot of success containing the running game from their catching position. Luke Roy caught the first five games. Maldonado started yesterday. Jonathan narrowly missed a double down the right field line in the first inning. He ended up walking in that at bat. He says his at bats are good. He's seeing the ball well. Hits aren't coming quite yet, though. So you like a confident hitter, a guy who trusts what he's doing at the plate. Well, he knows he can hit, and he knows he's going to hit. And guys like that, yeah, don't get too worked up about you know tough stretches or even slow starts. He's had slow starts before. Called strike three. Lucroy is out. Wainwright. Picks up the K. That is his second strikeout to go along with the walk. Carving up that outside corner. And Bill Welke rings it up. A two seam fastball that uh, came back and caught the edge. Can't give up on that pitch. That had plenty to play by the time Molina caught it. Yeah, a lot of comeback on that sinker. One away for Ryan Braun. Takes a strike from Wainwright. Ryan with a fly ball out to center field in the first. And this one's on the ground, gobbled up by Carpenter. Two away. A lot of baseball already in progress today. Six different teams have their home opener this afternoon. I saw where Corey Hart and the Pirates jumped on Detroit. They beat the Tigers today 5 4. It's the first loss for Detroit, but Corey Hart hit a home run in that game. His 999th career hit. So uh, Corey Hart made it a memorable pinch hit appearance. He's a hit away from a thousand. Congratulations mm -hmm. to him. His first homer of the season. Now you just wonder how much he's going to play. He might play some first base over there with Alvarez getting him a day off against lefties, but we'll see. Adam Lind with two away. Drove in the first run in the first with a ground out. He chases that one and fouls it away. Mets had their home opener today as well rock the uh, Mets shut out the Phillies the rookie of the year last year Jacob DeGrom was the winning pitcher he beat Aaron Harang. I think he's for real. What do you think. I Absolutely no question. By the way I got to make a correction on Corey Hart. I said nine ninety nine. That's what he did yesterday it's in Milwaukee. Thousand, right. Yeah. His one thousandth career hit. Was today the home run. Right. I forgot to mention that small fact that his 999th hit came yesterday 
which is why I brought it up in the first place. Because we were talking about that earlier. <laughs> I thought I heard you wrong. No, no. His 1,000th hit today. As Lynn rolls over one. And that will retire the side. So a 1-2-3 inning with a strikeout for Wainwright. Brewers with a couple of runs early. They lead 2-0. Garza returns to the mound. Adam Wainwright and the Cardinals two to nothing as we head to the home third and it's time to look at the T-Mobile game changer that would be Matt Carpenter yesterday 11th inning of Kevin Gregg two run homer that certainly did change the game that gave the Cardinals the lead they would go on to win seven to five don't hit many home runs but if you're going to hit them that's a good place to do it great American ballpark Carpenter lined out to center field his first time up against Garza second time through the batting order now as Garza gets ahead of the Cardinal leadoff hitter. This is where the problems began for Matt in his first start against the Rockies second time through. And a Cruz first time through the batting order but then found some trouble. Cardinals went one for seven with a walk and a. Carpenter Hayward Holiday. And that one's in there. Good breaking ball from Garza. Yep, trying to work in that curveball. Fastball, curveball slider for Matt Garza. Didn't throw many curveballs against the Rockies. Maybe trying to work that one in today. That ball's hit well, slicing, and it's down. A base hit. Gomez able to cut it off. That'll save a triple as Carpenter rolls into second with a double. He's hit the ball hard sharply twice now. This does such a good job staying on the baseball. That pitch was up and in. Check it out. Up and in. Actually leaked out over the heart of the plate. He just drove it into the opposite field gap. I mean, not trying to pull it. Kind of an old school hitter. No batting gloves. And a leadoff double. Lead off double base runner at second for Jason Hayward. And a strike to Hayward fastball in there. Hayward was in a little bit of controversy yesterday in Cincinnati. Matter of fact there was a, a hard slide at third base and the Reds manager Brian Price called it a dirty slide. I didn't see it that way. Neither did the Cardinals pickoff play close. Just back. I saw it as a kind of a late slide. He kind of got his feet, footwork caught up a little bit as he got to third base. It was a late slide. He actually he jumped up and then made sure that the you know, guy was all right. Frazier. So not sure uh, what the issue was there. 
Brian Price took exception, as did the Reds. Not a whole lot of love lost there. Hayward in the air to left. Easy fly ball for Chris Davis. Carpenter's going to tag. And he'll force Davis to make a throw. It's kind of frustration, right, on the part of the Reds, perhaps. A long stretch of yeah. series that uh, they have not been able to beat the Cardinals. That brings us to today's time of the game. Amato's Restaurant, that's in Watertown. They call the Brewers in the next 24 hours. They get 40 Miller Light beer pen tickets to a Brewers home game this year. So off courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Light. Garza with one away, runner at second. It's got Matt Holiday coming up now. Yeah, I think the rest of the division all feels the same way about the Cardinals. I mean, the Cardinals have owned this division for quite some time now. Mentioned going back to the 2000 season, 11 postseason appearances. And the year they went in as the wild card, they won the World Series. Holiday with a base hit. Carpenter is going to be held around third. Braun with a strong throwing arm and a wise hold up there by Jose Okendo. First and third for St. Louis. Maybe with two outs you take a shot, but not with one and Matt Adams. Yeah, coming up. Well, for sure with two outs you're going to send them. Yeah, that and the fact that when you're at second base you don't have the angle. You're not sure if that ball is going to be into right field. Not sure how close it is to the second baseman Jeanette, so he has a bit of a late break. And Okendo, the secret weapon, holds him up. He's lost some weight. Yeah, he has. He dropped 30 pounds as well. Everybody's losing weight. Not everybody. Just except us. <laughs> I don't think Matt Adams has shed any pounds this offseason. Big burly power hitter. First and third. Brewers need a double play ball. And Adams takes strike one. What's the most weight you've ever lost in an offseason from one year to the next when you were playing? Oh, when I was playing? I didn't lose a whole lot of weight when I was playing. I pretty much stayed stayed packed. What was your uh, your playing weight? What'd you say? What was on the immediate guide yeah, or the no, actual yeah, playing I weight? Like to, I like to have the truth at About this 225. point. 225. That's a good number, Rob. That's a good stout number for a fella 6'3". I'd like to be able to see that again someday. <laughs> well, you got it. There's just a few <laughs> a few more added to a few, it. Yeah. I mean, you've got the first 225 covered, no okay, problem. I, I get it. <laughs> He just doubled down on it in a few areas. <laughs> yeah, well, good living. The 1 1, Adams chops it foul. That'll move it to 1 and 2 now. Garza deals a one two down and in move the feet of Adams count even to two and two Matt Adams has proven to be a clutch power hitter in the playoffs hit two go ahead home runs in the seventh inning or later in two different postseasons. Fouls that one away. Yeah. Well, not much of a lead for Matt Holiday, so you think maybe you can turn the double play. Adams can't run all that well. Adams had that famous home run in the game two of the league championship series last year. They lost that series to the Giants, but Adams had a big homer there, had one in the division series as well. That's on the ground. Jeanette, his only play is first, but a run comes in. So Garza gets his second out. If it's hit a little bit harder, Jeanette has a chance at a double play. Well, I think he still had a chance at second base because of Matt Holiday's lead. He doesn't run all that well, not much of a lead. And Jeanette certainly had an opportunity to get the lead runner, maybe get a shot at a double play ball. He had time. 
but takes the easy out at first base. Yeah, you can see Janev. As soon as he made that throw, he frustrated at himself. So a run scores. The Cardinals are on the board. Matt Adams drives in his second run of the season. Holiday advances to second. Here is Peralta. And Garza skips one in, knowing Peralta is always eager to swing on the first pitch. Well, second time that uh, Garza has misfired on a breaking pitch today. That one even further from home plate than the first. Holiday dancing off second. I honestly don't think he's going to be stealing third base. Yeah, Garza just didn't like the way that was going. Maybe he didn't like the pitch that was called. Reset it here with Luke Croy. Two outs in the inning. Garza trying to get to the dugout, keep the lead as is. And another breaking ball bounces. 2 0 the count on Peralta. Cardinals were desperate to find a shortstop. They had rolled uh, a number of candidates through here until taking a chance on Peralta last season. Three balls, no strikes. Been a tough spot to fill for the Cardinals. Yeah, it really has for a long time now. It was, uh, you know, when you when you come to these uh, events and you see Ozzy Smith, the Wizard, do his thing, and remind you how good they had it for many years here in St. Louis. Great shortstop. There's a strike. Three and one the count. And Rafael for call had a nice little run here, but he was oft injured. Peralta. Plays the position well and brings a little thump. He had 21 homers last year. Been around a long time. Strike two. Another fastball in there. Three and two the count. Yeah, really uh, challenging Peralta with two fastballs on the inside corner. Peralta likes that ball in on him. John Jay next. Garza has come back from a 3 0 deficit here. Now it's 3 and 2, two outs. As a matter of fact, Peralta last year set a franchise record for home runs by a shortstop in a single season with those 21 homers. And he led the Cardinals in home runs. And St. Louis, the storied franchise, has not had a shortstop lead their team in homers since 1899. I mean, when you're going back before the turn of that century, something special. Fouled that one away. You remember Bobby Wallace? Brock? He, no, was a, he was the Cardinal shortstop in 1899. Yeah. Good power hitter, I guess. Yeah. They didn't hit many home runs back then. Typically, your shortstop's not a power spot in your lineup. And he mentioned that, and again, you know, the Cardinals don't hit many, so 21, quite a quite a few for a Cardinal hitter last year. Full count, two outs. Garza delivers and he misses outside ball four. That was a long battle with Peralta. But a two-out walk, and now the Cardinals. Have two on, and a fresh count coming up for John Jay. The pitch count starting to rise a little bit for Garza. This crowd getting revved up here. They have high expectations for their ball club once again. Why not? 
perennial contender, the Cardinals. And because they have such good pitching, you know, not just starters, but relievers as well. Offense comes and goes for every ball club, but you have to have that good pitching. Last year they had great defense. Keeps you in games. Wainwright coming off his first three up three down inning. Cardinals have scored one two on. Jay down the line Davis on the run and that is slicing foul. Wow. Close down there. Good effort by Chris Davis. Not a lot of foul territory down there along the left field line. And that ball drops that's two runs. Uh, this is how. How close it was down that line at the side wall. That ball stayed fair. Davis would have been able to catch it. He got to that line quickly. Yeah, that's a good way to do it, too. He's uh, really starting to get comfortable. Even though he made an error in left field yesterday, and he took it extremely hard. He is starting to settle in as a defensive player out in left. And a swing and a miss by Jay. One and two the count. You see a player slide like that and start to get familiar with the surroundings. You know he's feeling confident, yeah. feeling comfortable in this position. Pretty good outfielder. Doesn't have the greatest throwing arm, but you know, he can get to some baseball. Big pitch coming. One ball, two strikes. And another one spiked in there. Good job by Lucroy. He's had to block a couple of tough. Sliders in the dirt. Sliders and curveballs way in front of home plate. He's only let one get by him. Those ones that bounce so far in front of home plate. I mean, you sometimes you just have to be lucky. Put yourself in good position and hope it hits you somewhere. Matt Holiday at second. Reached on a single to right. Peralta's at first. He walked. And a called strike three. Garza rings the bell with a fastball. Gets out of the inning. Strands two Cardinals. St. Louis does score. Fourth, Colton Wong uh, committing an error in the first inning. He and Jason Hayward have had a couple of miscues in this game and a couple of plays worth another look, courtesy of Columbia St. Mary's. And not sure what happened there. That looked like a routine ground ball, maybe a little bit of spin, but this is one that Jason Hayward will catch just about every time. Took a poor route, actually overran it. And both of those miscues have contributed to Brewers' runs. Well, Adam Wainwright has been able to minimize the damage. Brewers do have two hits. Both of the runs coming in on ground balls that ended up as outs. Lind has an RBI and Scooter Jeanette. Both of the hits came back to back by Davis and Segura in the second inning. So this inning it'll be Ramirez followed by Davis and then Segura. 
And Aramis just doesn't quite have his timing yet. You could tell he's a, a tick late on the fastball and a touch ahead of the breaking yeah, stuff. Just all about timing. He got a lot of bad bats in spring training. But uh, typically a slow starter, except for last year. Last April, got off to a great start. And that's uh, somewhat unusual for him. Aramis ended up batting 285 last year. Hit 15 home runs, 66 RBIs. And that's kind of about the numbers that you'd expect from Ramirez this season. He hopes to hit for a higher batting average, but he's only planning on playing about 135, 140 games. And the Brewers are hoping he gets to that number. A swing and a miss. Wainwright threw him the hook. That's his signature pitch. And Ramirez is down on strikes. Wainwright has punched him out twice. And just not able to wait back, drifting a little bit as that pitch is coming, which makes him a little bit behind the fastball and out in front of the curveball. So Wainwright will face Chris Davis, who singled and scored in the second inning. And it misses away. Let's check in with Craig. Well, part of the buzz in the clubhouse today to get this offense going is simply stringing hits together. That's what the Brewers failed to do in the first two innings of this game, even though they were able to get a couple of runs. This is all Ron Reinke thinks this club needs to do to get this offense going right now. Davis has been swinging the bat pretty well, even though he's got the out right here. But you're right, getting Ramirez on track would certainly help the top of that order, especially. Yeah, Lucroy, Rowan, Ramirez all have to get it going. Gomez is doing his thing. Lind has been swinging the bat well. So is Davis. Gene Segura, but those guys in the middle, the guys that need to get on base, that need to drive in the runs, need to start doing it. New hitting coach Darnell Coles. He's working hard trying to find the right answers here. Mostly just trying to settle his hitters down and uh, Keep him in a good place mentally. That's what you do when you're slumping as an offense. Unfortunately, it comes to start the season, which reminds everybody of what happened at the end of last season, and that's what you were trying to avoid. Yeah, you don't want them thinking about that. That's for sure. You press as a team. You know, the guy in front of you is having a tough time. You feel like you need to pick up the slack, and you're pressing. That's why they say hitting is contagious because when you, when everybody around you is hitting, you're relaxed up there, knowing that if I don't get it done, the guy behind me. Is going to be able to do it. When you have a scuffling offense, everybody tried to do too much. I know that's an overused statement, but that's true. Here's a one two to Segura. Fly ball out to Hayward. And Adam Wainwright has locked down the Brewers since Segura's double in the second inning. He has retired nine straight.
Brewers Baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Marshfield Clinic. Don't just live, shine. By Piggly Wiggly, the official supermarket of Fox Sports Wisconsin. And by Hupe and Abraham, 800-800-5678. Hupe and Abraham, tell them you mean business. Packed House Bush Stadium, St. Louis. On the banks of the mighty Mississippi here in downtown St. Louis, Missouri. Matt Garza back at it as we go to the fourth inning. Wainwright has locked in. So Garza hoping to match him pitch for pitch. Brewers got a couple of runs early off Wainwright. Scored one in the first on a ground ball by Adam Lind. And then a ground out by Jeanette. Driving in the second run. Cardinals just scored last inning. So all three of the runs have scored on outs. How about that? Matt Adams had the RBI last inning on a 4-3 ground out. Yeah, productive outs. Put the ball in play when you have to. The man at third base. Molina struck out looking his last time up. Garza almost hit him. 3-0 the count on Yadier Molina. Almost don't recognize him. Ball four walked him on four straight. Never a good way to start an inning. A leadoff walk. Garza down at the bottom of the St. Louis order. And Luke Croy is on his way to the mound. That one burned him a little bit. Yeah, Cardinals uh, have put their leadoff hitter aboard in the last three innings. Second and third with base hits, and this time a walk. And Colton Wong is a tough guy to double up. He runs well. Batting eighth in Matheny's lineup. Wong walked his last time up. Cars has issued four walks now. Cardinals have three hits. Two hits coming last inning. Hey, with most of these Cardinal base runners, you don't have to worry too much about the stolen base. Molina's not going anywhere. So you can forget about worrying about that, keeping them close. Maybe throw over once in a while, but he's not going anywhere. Two balls and a strike. Long finished. Third in the rookie of the year voting last year behind Jacob DeGrom, who won the award, the Mets pitcher, and Billy Hamilton of the Reds. Pitching dominated the awards last year. Clayton Kershaw won the Cy Young and the MVP last season in the National League. And then a pitcher, Jacob DeGrom, won the rookie of the year in the NL. If there was ever a time to give a pitcher an MVP award, it would be last year with Kershaw season. Right. And unfortunately for a guy like Adam Wainwright, he is <laughs> he's pitching in the Kershaw era right now, and it's tough to win an award like that when Clayton Kershaw is the best in the business. After being in the Carpenter Lincecum era. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, Lincecum won a couple. Wong takes ball four. Boy, Garza digging himself a hole here in the fourth. Back to back walks to the seventh and eighth place hitters in the Cardinal lineup. And now you give Wainwright the opportunity to drop down a bunt. Hey, with MLB.com ballpark app, you can personalize your trip to Miller Park this season with digital ticket access, concession map, seat upgrades, exclusive offers, and much, much more. Download the MLB. Dot com ballpark app today free for your 
smartphone or tablet. In dangerous waters here, Matt Garza. Wainwright squares to bunt, and he gets one down to third. Got a chance at third. Out there, Segura's throw is high. Throws it away. It stays in play, which means a run is going to score. Man, oh, man, they had a double play right in front of them. Yes, they did. Tie game, 2-2, as Wong comes all the way around to score the run. Boy, just let that one fly to Segura, and he had plenty of time, too. Felt like he had to wind up and put a lot on it. I don't think he did. Wainwright got out of the box a little bit slow. And Segura just lets this one fly. Air mails Jeanette. And a run comes around to score. Colton Wong started at first base. Ends up scoring on the throwing air. Put out goes five to six. And then the... Error by Segura allows Wong to come all the way around. Wainwright ended up at second base. 2-2 game. So an error led to a Brewers run. I think Ron Rennie going out to see uh, or ask the home plate umpire if he could perhaps look and see if there's any interference on that plate down there. Ball got tangled up. They saw Molina slide at third base as long as he's able to make contact with the base. And I think that's what the umpires have determined. Two two game. Wainwright at second top of the order now for St. Louis. Carpenter has been a tough out today. Hit a rocket to center for the first out of the game offensively for the Cardinals and then doubled in the left center field gap started with back-to-back -back walks and the Cardinals looked like they had given a gift to the Brewers on a firm bunt towards third Brewers can't capitalize and the throwing air leads to the run go ahead run now in scoring position Carpenter in the left hit well back is Davis and he's got it for the second out Garza, and you can escape this inning with just one run. That'll be a small victory right there. Yeah. Starting the inning with two walks and then an error. You just can't give the Cardinals breaks. You can't give them extra outs. The Bruce shouldn't be able to turn the double play. A good throw to first base from Segura, and then out of the inning with no runs across. Segura, a very sure handed shortstop. The second error of the year, however. Jason Hayward takes ball one. Yeah, that's the one thing you don't really have to worry too much about with Segura. You know, errant throws. I mean, bad throws, particularly when he was able to get himself on balance. He just wound up a little bit too much and missed everything. Hayward is in the last year of his contract, a contract that he originally signed with the Braves. And he's only 25 years of age, already has six years in the big leagues in. Burst on the scene. His rookie year. Very good opposite field hitter. He stands way off of home plate. But likes to get his arms extended. That's why he stand so far away from the plate. He had a home run in his first game as a big leaguer. He was a rookie in 2010. Buster Posey won the rookie of the year that year. Hayward finished second. Hayward 
hit 18 homers and 72 RBIs his rookie year. His best year was 2012. 27 bombs, 82 RBIs. But he hasn't shown to be that kind of hitter since that time. Right. More of an opposite field hitter these days. He's Up the him. middle, left field. He's dealt with some injuries. Production has dropped off. I think the Braves were content to trade him away to open up some space for their young outfielders, and then they needed pitching. They got Shelby Miller in that deal. Hayward swings and misses. Down he goes on strikes, and Garza able to escape. So just one run scores despite two walks and an error, and we're tied at two. Potawatomi Hotel and Casino, a 2-2 game as we go to the top of the fifth inning. Join Major League Baseball and the Milwaukee Brewers in the fight against cancer. Major League Baseball will celebrate the stories of fans who are going to bat against breast cancer and their daily lives. One honorary Batgirl winner will be selected per club. Visit honorarybatgirl.com to vote for your local honorary Batgirl today. Adam Wainwright back out on the mound. He's retired nine in a row now, so the Brewer hitters, if they want to get something going there, in that danger zone right now where he's definitely found a groove now after giving up two early runs. Yeah, that's a scary proposition for the Brew crew with Adam Wainwright. We've seen it before. I mean, that's the way he goes. This guy's an elite pitcher for a reason, and he was able to work through some jams and some errors, misplays in the first two innings, but that's what aces do. Right. They, they pick up their defense they're minimize just that the good. damage yep and had it not been for those two miscues the Brewers would still be looking for their first run only two hits for Milwaukee those came back to back in the second inning so Scooter Jeanette will lead off he'll be followed by Garza and then to the top of the order in Gomez Jeanette drove in a run in the second inning had a ground out after the first two had reached ground ball to short that allowed a second run to come in That's the other part of Wainwright's game that affords a, a manager a lot of flexibility. You know, there are some pitchers, you get two on early in a game like that, you're going to bring your infield in. You're trying to cut down a big inning. But with Wainwright on the mound, you trust that he will be able to unravel a bad inning. And you leave your infield back, you concede a run, but it doesn't turn into a multiple hit, multiple run right, inning. Right. But he, that's is a, all he allows. but he is a ground ball pitcher, and bringing the infield in would not be to your benefit. I mean, ground ball pitchers, typically you don't want to bring the infield in all that much. He can get the strikeout early in the game, and we just rely on guys like Wainwright. You got, you know, Kershaw is in that category, and just allow them to do a little bit more than what you would expect other guys to do. 
Jeanette into center field coming in is John Jay. And there is out number one. That's 10 in a row retired by Adam Wainwright. That run that Jeanette produced in the second inning, that was the first earned run of the season for Wainwright. He went six shutout against the Cubs in his first start. And then the run that the Brewers scored in the first inning was unearned. Garza is the ultimate underdog against Adam Wainwright. <laughs> If that was an NCAA tournament matchup, Rock, that'd be a 16 1 matchup. Yeah, but sometimes the 16s win, or maybe they don't, no, right? They've never won. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I thought about that as I was uh, saying it. Say every weeknight, don't miss MLB Whip Around on Fox Sports 1 with highlights, instant analysis, and live look ins from around the league. MLB Whip Around is weeknight, 6 p.m. Central on Fox Sports 1, streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Well, maybe you're right, though. Maybe it's more like a 15 2 match. Yeah, come on. It's, not, that, it's not impossible. <laughs> Bartolo Colon got a base hit yesterday. Yes, he did. That was impressive. He had a career batting average of what, 050? <laughs> drove in a run. Lost his helmet on the swing and drove in a run. Two outs for Gomez. Back up the middle, a base hit. So that breaks the run for Wainwright. Snaps it at 11 in a row. Carlos Gomez with a clean single. And you wonder if uh, Gomez is going to challenge Yadi or Molina. And Lucroy coming up. Looked like an off speed pitch from Wainwright, and he bangs it right back into center field. Didn't want to leave it down the middle and up in his own. First hit for Gomez. We'll see if he's on the move here. Luke Croy with Gomez at first. It's awfully difficult to run on Molina. Plus, you've got the Wainwright factor. He's very good at holding runners close. He gets rid of it quickly. He's got a little slide step, too, doesn't he? Yeah. Which quickens his pace to the plate. In the dirt. Two balls, no strikes on Luke Croy. Sometimes you try and be a little bit too quick to home plate. You get out of your rhythm. And he's behind Luke. Now Luke Croy with his great doubles power, his gap to gap power, gives Gomez a chance to score from first base on a ball like that, especially with the size of this outfield. Cardinals outfielders are very deep. They're trying to cut off that extra base hit. Two and nothing on Luke Croy. And that one's inside. Ball three. And let's see if Ron Renke gives Luke Croy the green light. Why not? Struggling hitter. Get a fastball down the middle. Let him get, go after it. First time Wainwright's been in the stretch since the second inning. Three and oh the count. And Lucroy taking all the way takes a strike. Lucroy has walked and struck out. Wainwright struck him out on a outside corner fastball last time. Lucroy beats it into the ground. Carpenter gloves, spins, and throws him out. Down 3-0, and Wainwright comes back to get Jonathan Lucroy to end the inning. Brewer strand a base runner. 2-2 game to go to the home fifth.
morning here in St. Louis. Cardinals tied it in the bottom of the fourth. Our Carsoup.com trivia. Which starting pitcher led the 81 Brewers in wins and was tied for the team lead with the 79 Cardinals? Connecting the two franchises. The answer in our Carsoup.com trivia. Whoops. Pete Vukovic. There you go. You saw it briefly. No, I had it. There you go. I Pete had, Vukovic. I, I knew the answer. Handsome <laughs> Devil Vuki. Now a uh, scout with the Seattle Mariners. He and Jack Zarensic together. Ted Simmons is over there. 1982 Cy Young Award winner, Pete Vukovic. Garza goes to work here in the bottom of the fifth. And Matt Holliday leads off for the Cardinals. We used to see Vuka in spring training quite a bit. We haven't seen him around in a while. Did you see him this year? No. You know, I saw him. I saw him at one spring training game in, in uh, Peoria. Holiday singles up the middle. So a base hit for Matt Holiday. He is two for two with a walk against Matt Garza today. Yeah, I saw him in Peoria just the, that one time. He was right there with the Mariners. Yeah. And that uh, Brewers Mariners spring training game. He looked the same. He looked very Vukovician. Yeah. <laughs> What a great teammate Pete Bukovic was. Those guys like to have a good time, that's for sure. Matt Adams on the ground. Chance for two. Lynn to Segura. And another high throw. Another missed opportunity for the Brewers here. They just can't continue to give the Cardinals extra outs. What's going on out there? Boy, Adams rolled into what looked like a tailor-made double play. No error on the play. He can't assume a double play, so Adams reaches on a fielder's choice. About as easy as it gets right here. Good throw from Lind. Arm drops, and, and no chance for Lind. He tried to get back. Good throw. Just another high throw from Segura. Segura has a throwing error already. And a missed throw here allows Adams to first. Johnny Peralta. You're not scoring a lot of runs. You just cannot continue to give the opponent extra out, particularly the St. Louis Cardinals. Peralta has had a good day at the plate. He singled and walked. That hit in the second inning was right back up the middle. Came on the first pitch of the at bat from Garza. Then he had a long at bat against Garza in the third inning. That resulted in a walk. Eight pitch at bat. One ball, one strike. Down and in. Two and one. Garza trying to get a ground ball double play here to win the inning. Nice two seam fastball, just a little bit low. You want to leave it low as opposed to leaving it up in the zone, though. You're going to miss, miss down. Two balls, two strikes on Johnny Peralta. Adams is not a threat to steal. And a swing and a miss. Peralta strikes out. It went right back to it. That two seam fastball and Peralta over the top of it. That's a nice pitch. Gets on top. That's when you get that downward movement. And Peralta not able to get a piece of it. That's about a perfect pitch as you can get right there. That's four strikeouts now for Garza. That's about as good as it gets. It's exactly where you want that two-seamer. He'll face John Jay now. Two outs, fifth inning, 2-2 game. Jay 
Sneaks one through for a base hit. Adams will hold his ground at second. First hit of the game for John Jay, and the Cardinals keep the pressure on here. Well, the first pitch swing for these Cardinals. I think they're up to something here, knowing that Garza, with already five walks, wants to get ahead in the count, and they're not letting it go by. Matt Holiday on the first pitch with the hitting coach, John Mabry. Cardinals have had at least two runners on base in every inning of this game, with the exception of the first. So Molina with two on and two out. Molina has one of the five walks issued by Garza. A lot of high stress pitches from Matt Garza today. Defense has let him down a little bit though. First pitch curveball is closer but can't quite dial that one in today. Good start in the 12 pitch first inning. Giving up just the one walk. Long third inning for Garza. Gave up two hits and a walk in that inning, but minimized the damage with just one run. Molina to Jeanette. And Matt Garza gets through it. So a couple of hits for the Cardinals, but Garza puts up a zero in the fifth. We go to the sixth. 2-2. Two -two. St. Louis Arch standing tall here downtown St. Louis great view from our vantage point at Bush Stadium all tied at two top of the sixth inning. Take a look at the Brewers home run leaders presented by Powerball just three home runs this year. These are the totals from last season Gomez led the club with 23 homers to go along with 30 stolen bases. Chris Davis with a career high 22. Powerball home run leaderboard. Brewers could use a couple here. Adam Wainwright doesn't give up many. 2 2 game, sixth inning. Wainwright will face Braun Lind Ramirez to start it. Braun is 0 for 2 today. Flew out to center field in the first, and then he grounded to third in the third. Off to a slow start this season. Brewers need him. Braun yeah. injured himself on opening day, had a, a right side strain. Had to come out of the game opening day, missed the next two starts. Although he did pinch hit two days after the injury, actually had a pinch hit RBI. And an infield hit in that game against Colorado. Got to have him in the lineup. Got to have all these guys in the lineup. The Brewers don't feel as though their depth 
is enough to be able to make up for some injuries. Got to get this guy going. Wayne Wright's, Wright's got him down one and two. And Braun just shoots one to the right side for a base hit. Wow, what a piece of hitting that was. Yeah, no kidding. Cutter, slider, something like that. And Brony just dropped the head of the bat on it and flipped it right by Matt Adams. That was a heck of a job by Braun, not just to get a bat on it, but to shoot it in that direction. What a bad pitch. Not supposed to be inside. I think he might have tried to front door it. That's not a pitch that you would ordinarily see a right handed hitter hit the right field. Went down and barreled it up to right field. That is so hard to do, huh? Yeah, you don't see many hitters do that. Yeah. Well, it's a lead single for the crew here, the six. Now Adam Lind at the plate. And Lind sends one down the right field line. That is down. Fair ball. Braun around second on his way to third will be held there. As Adam Lind comes up with a double. And the Brewers have runners at second and third with nobody out in the sixth. Well, so the Brewers are jumping on the first pitch bandwagon, just like the Cardinals have been doing. Double number 200 for Adam Lind. There's that fastball. He missed his spot. Molina wanted it away. He left it middle in. Just did tuck it inside that right field line. Well, the Brewers once again in business, second and third, nobody out. How about Adam Lind and his career against Wainwright in a small sample size? Five at bats. He has three hits, including a home run and now a double. Big spot for the crew. Here's Ramirez. Cardinals bring or set their infield back in regular depth, especially on the left side. Looks like they've got Wong at second base creeping in just a few steps. Well, thinking maybe they might have a play at home plate if Ramirez hits one hard in that direction. Typically, he doesn't hit ground balls over there. Braun has good speed at third. And that one's on the ground, ranging over Peralta. Braun will score the run and a pick by Adams wow, nice. to get the out. That was a tough throw to handle for Adams. I thought that ball was going to be in that Cardinal dugout, but Adams on that in-between hop able to pick it nicely. So the Brewers take the lead on an RBI ground out. Well, if you don't get a base hit, advance base runners, and Ramirez able to advance two. And scoring one, sending one over to third base with less than two outs. Yeah, Braun scores the go-ahead run here in the sixth inning. Infield in now for Chris Davis. Got an interesting theme developing in this game. All five runs that have scored have uh, come on out or batted balls in the infield, meaning right. the yeah. only other run that didn't score on an out was the error by Segura that allowed a run to score. But there was an out prior to that. No runs have scored on base hits. There's no clean singles or clean hits for runs. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, you see a couple of those maybe you're all right but five of the runs right each club with five hits Cardinals have left a ton of base runners they've stranded eight one ball one strike Davis a big swing and a miss Davis at the plate presented by Wendy's with that single little run scored in the second inning and then he grounded out his last time up. One ball, two strikes. Good block by Molina. Count evens at two and two. Not Make as much surface area no. as there was last year, but he still gets the job done. Makes it look easy. Normally he gets that baseball in the dirt on the bounce and puts it right smack in the center of that chest protector. Cardinals with their infield in with one away. And Davis takes a call. Strike three. Wainwright hit the edge. 
It's a big out right there for Wainwright. Davis needing to put something in the air at least. I think uh, Chris was looking breaking pitch. Dangerous to be guessing with two strikes. Wainwright catches the edge and Molina makes it look pretty good. Mm, it was a strike. Fourth strikeout for Wainwright. Two outs now. Here's Segura. Adam Lind at third after a double down the right field line. Close. Didn't get the call. It goes to 2 0. Will Smith in the Brewers' bullpen. Garza has threw five innings, but he has had to work hard to get through those five. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe if his spot comes up in a batting order, that's perhaps why Will's getting loose. Ball three to Segura. Segura doubled into right center in the second. Trying to drive in a two out run here. Three and oh. Takes a strike. Gene's off to a good start. Swinging the bat. Has a home run. That home run at Miller Park was a bomb. 440 feet. Full count it goes. That took a little off with a cutter. Yeah, Segura has been staying back nicely so far this year. Short sample size, but he's made a nice adjustment from last year. Three and two with two away. And Segura right to Adams. Hit it like a bullet, but right at the Cardinal first baseman. And the inning is over. Promising start. Brewers do get a run, and they take the lead three to two. And Matt Garza, like Wainwright, been able to minimize the damage and work through a few jams. Four strikeouts today for Matt Garza through the first five innings. He's walked five. Two runs in. One of them is earned. Segura committed an error, allowing that second run to score. It's 3-2 Milwaukee as we head to the home sixth. Yeah, five walks and you've only allowed two runs. You got to feel pretty fortunate. Colton Wong leads off. Cardinals have Wong, Wainwright, and then to the top of the order and Carpenter, do up here.
Cardinals have stranded eight base runners. And Wong sends one way back, but foul. Long, loud strike from the Cardinals second baseman. Pitch count for Garza at 87. I think the lease is going to be pretty short here. You've got uh, Wong in the pitcher's spot, and then you got two left-handers coming up. Which is why Will Smith is getting loose. Yeah, you figure Smith for Carpenter. Unless Garza can retire the first two hitters with ease, you never know. See what the manager has in mind. One two pitch. Hey, you figure Wainwright's not going to get pinch hit for at this point. Well, maybe some other guys, but not, not him. Not your ace. No, not him. Another one two offering hit hard but right at Jeanette. And there is the first out. That's a big one for Garza. They make Wainwright swing the bat as opposed to having to go up there and drop down a bunch. That's how you stay in the game for the whole inning. You get that leadoff hitter. It has been a grind for Garza. Some of it by his doing others by some breakdowns defensively. Garza has walked five in this game, though, so he's had a lot of traffic behind him. Hasn't had a one, two, three inning yet today. He starts at Wainwright with a big hook. Buckled his knees, gets ahead of him. Yeah, tied him up. Boy, that. Sinking fastball he's found here in the it's last couple one. of innings. I don't remember him throwing that too much. Got a good strikeout last inning for Peralta on that mm -hmm. pitch. It looks like he's getting stronger here. Garza had an extra day of rest as well. The Brewers choosing not to go to a four man rotation. So utilizing the off day the Brewers are going to have another off day tomorrow and then they'll continue the series Wednesday and Thursday here Thursday is a day game by the way. O2 pitch Wainwright breaks his bat Segura has had some throwing problems today. This one's right on the money two up two down for Garza. Hey tomorrow is starting at 9 a.m. tickets for the Brewers upcoming games against the Reds on April 20th through the 22nd will be available. For just four bucks and fourteen cents, four dollars and fourteen cents, as part of a special one-day sale. For more details, visit Brewers.com slash four one four. Four dollars and fourteen cents for a big league ticket. That's a pretty good deal. Here's Matt Carpenter now. Makes me a little bit sad, actually. Uh, the Milwaukee Day, the four one four. I was trying to think about. You know when when my day would come Waukesha day Waukesha County day. Mm -hmm. It's a two six two that that's never going to happen. And that's sad. All right. You'll get over it won't you. Yeah, I mean I just have to latch on to Milwaukee day. Are you a four one four or a two six two guy. Two six two. Nah, I feel bad for you too. <laughs> Garza trying to make it a three up three down sixth inning. He needs one. Probably be his last inning. Carpenter's been a tough out for him as well. He's hit the ball hard all three times. He's one for three. A double and two line drive outs. Everything to the opposite field. Garza's spot is due up second in the seventh inning. And a pitch count that is approaching 100. So. This figures to be the end of the line for Garza trying to go out with a three up three down frame. Two two to Matt Carpenter. The 
crew just took the lead in the top of this inning. On a ground out and RBI from Aramis Ramirez. The Brewers had a, have had a couple of innings where they could have put up more than one run, but Wainwright has not allowed them to do that. Second and third, nobody out in the sixth. Only got one. Here's a 2 2. Carpenter pulls one. Lind over, can't get it. Base hit. Right between Lind and Jeanette. And Carpenter is aboard with his second hit. Now you might see Will Smith in now with Jason Hayward coming up. We'll see what Ron Renicki elects to do. Granite's the pitching coach talking to Renicki. Well, everything that Carpenter's hit has been to center field or the opposite field, and this time he's able to pull one out of the reach of Lynn. So Renicki made an early call to the bullpen. He and Kranitz were in a pretty good discussion down there prior to uh, Ron coming out. You got a left handed hitter in Hayward coming up and a tough left handed pitcher in Will Smith. So Garza will exit here in the sixth. Still got a chance to win this game. Here comes Smith. By Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. And by the Wisconsin Lottery, reminding you to please play responsibly. Well, it's a tight one here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. It is 3 2 Milwaukee. Garza is out. Couldn't quite get through the six. He goes for five and two thirds, just one earned run at this point. And it was a battle for him. And now Renicki is going to give the ball to Will Smith with the left handed hitting Jason Hayward coming up with two away. Yeah, hopefully he's going to be able to get out of this inning and get the Brewers to the seventh. His fourth appearance has not allowed a run. And two and a third innings of work. And he's been able to get four strikeouts under his belt. He's got the big lefty Hayward here. Matt Holliday is on deck. A little earlier. The normal for Smith to enter a game. It's one of the benefits of having Broxton and K Rod at the end of your bullpen, your setup man and your closer. And Jeremy Jeffries getting loose now. So it figures to be a one batter situation for Will Smith. And remember that pitcher spot is due up second in the seventh, which is why it's imperative to get this out. Cardinals have the tying run at first. Brewers just took the lead in the top of the inning. And a big wave and a miss. Went out match there was Hayward. And that's where you want that slider. He got him down 0 and 2. Maybe bounce a couple of those pitches. That's where you want it when you're ahead in the count off the plate. Here, Luke was setting up. He's setting up about two feet off the outside corner. 
He's got him in a hole. Smith in an 0-2 count. And Hayward doesn't bite this time. Good pitch though. Hayward in his first game as a Cardinal here at Bush Stadium. Got a huge ovation his first trip to the plate. One two and down he goes. Will Smith strikes him out. And a runner stranded at first. Renicky plays the card early with the left hander. And Will Smith gets a big punch out. The Brewers remain on top. 3 2 lead as we head to the seventh. Tell and Casino, and it's 3 2 Brew Crew as we go to the seventh inning. First matchup of the year between division rivals here. Brewers are in the middle of a, a long stretch of games against the Central Division. This is the fourth of 22 consecutive against the NL Central. They'll see them all home and home. Wainwright back to work. Scooter Jeanette will lead off. Three to two Milwaukee. Jeanette has driven in a run today. He had a ground out to short that produced a run in the second. Inning. If you're just getting home from work and you're dialing us in, it's the Cardinals opening day here this afternoon. As Jeanette lines one to right, a base hit. And pushing it around first, forcing a throw from Hayward. That's a good piece of hitting by Scooter. Man, high fastball, able to tomahawk it. Get on top of it and drive it hard in the right field. Look at this pitch. This is not typically a pitch that Scooter's going to go after too much. Pulls the hands in, gets on top of it, and lines it in the right. He's got a beautiful swing. It's off to a slow start, but starting to get it dialed in a little bit. Logan Schaefer will pinch hit for Will Smith. Smith gets the key strikeout on Hayward. To end the sixth inning, and now Schaefer coming off the bench. And he drops a bunt down, it is foul. The Brewers have had their leadoff batter reach base in the last three innings now. And five of the first seven innings of this game, they've yeah. had their lead batter reach. All right, error. And the rest of the time, base hits. Three of the five have scored. Feels like one of those games where the Brewers could have five, six, seven runs on the board, but right, yeah. you got to give credit to Wainwright. He's minimized those opportunities, even though the Brewers have had runners on with nobody out. Matter of fact, three times the Brewers have had two on with nobody out. They've scored just three runs. Double barrel action in the bullpen. Well, that's why he's a 20 game winner. Mm -hmm. Able to get himself in and out of trouble. 
Logan Schaefer takes a ball. Logan is the fifth outfielder for the Brewers. Got Davis, Gomez, and Braun as the starters in the outfield, and then Gerardo Parra, the fourth outfielder. And Schaefer, an accomplished defensive player, and when he's gotten his chances to hit, he's been up there to bunt so far this year. Gets one down, Wainwright. Only play is first. So a sacrifice bunt for Logan Schaefer. That advances Jeanette to second base. Yep, got to do the little things to beat Adam Wainwright. And there's one right there. Schaefer able to advance. Scooter to second base for the top of the Brewers batting order. And here is Gomez. Carlos had a clean single back up the middle in the fifth inning. He scored the first run of the game. He reached on an error and then came around to score on an Adam Lind fielder's choice. Brewers have scored their first three runs without benefit of a hit in this game. Wainwright has four strikeouts. He's only walked one. And the Brewers now with six hits. The hit total is even right now. One and two on Gomez. That's that cut fastball. Wainwright's got a good one. We've seen Wainwright throw the baseball better. This is not one of his better outings, but he's been able to minimize damage. That's what makes him so good. Seven days of rest between starts for Wainwright. A little bit unusual. Gomez down the left field line. That is down for a hit. Coming in to score is Jeanette, and it'll roll to the wall. Gomez thinking about third, takes a huge turn around second. As to scamper back, it's an RBI double for Carlos Gomez. This is an example of what I was talking about. It hasn't been the greatest start for Wainwright. He hangs a curveball on a two strike pitch. And Gomez able to get the bat on it. He was out in front, but keeps it in the hitting zone long enough. Leaves it up, and Gomez able to dump it down the left field line. So finally, a base hits to score a run in this game. That's the first one for either team. It's an RBI double for Gomez, who now has six RBIs on the year. 4-2 Brewers here in the seventh. Gomez with great speed at second for Luke Roy. Now time to get greedy. Lucroy walked in the first. Wainwright came back to strike him out in the third, and then a ground out on a 3 1 pitch in the fifth inning. Ninety six pitches for Adam Wainwright. Working here in the seventh. His first outing against the Cubs Sunday week ago, he went six shutout. Luke Croy back up the middle, bouncing, backhanded by Wong. The throw is high, and it bounces off the dugout. Coming in to score is Gomez. Hey, Luke Croy, all right. Boy, that was a, a crazy slide in the first base. He saw Adams jump up. He was able to avoid him, but. An error now scores Carlos Gomez. That's going to be an infield hit for Lucroy. No RBI. Gomez scores on an E4, the second error of the game for Colton Wong. Yeah, check out this crazy slide if we're able to see it. And Colton Wong probably should have just held on to that one. Look at that slide for Lucroy. I mean, it could have easily twisted an ankle or hurt a knee. And there's a Badger Mutual Insurance run. Carlos Gomez. Scores another. He's got two runs scored today. 
Five two brew crew. Still just one out here is Braun. I don't think Carlos ever touched third base. We can say that now. Yeah I like how you waited till the next pitch. Just in case <laughs> the Cardinals are listening right now. <laughs> You're such a player. <laughs> hey I don't think he touched third. <laughs> I was looking. That's good. That's what I love about you. <laughs> two runs are in for the crew. They've scored three in the last two innings. Now Matheny still has his bullpen active. You know he's trying to give Wainwright a chance to finish this inning and give his offense a chance to come back. But he might be running out of bullets here. This is pitch number 100 for Wainwright. Five runs on eight hits for the Brew Crew today. There's a strike to Braun. Two and one. Let's. Check out Gomez around third. Does he get it? If he gets it ever so jet, there it is. Yep, right on the top. Yep, the uh, the left foot. So that was touches third and heads home. It was awkward. I'll give you that. Two two. Now, when you're catching, and there's a play like that unfolding, is that something you'd be looking at? Just in yeah, case. Yeah, I'd be looking at the bases, yeah. You got guys in the dugout looking to make sure that uh, you know, they're touching bases. I know the Cardinals probably have somebody to make sure that they're all touching bases. You're not doing anything else. Not as well, way, right? So there's a designated guy, and you say, okay, today your job is to watch the base runners. Not necessarily. It's just kind of a, an understood job assignment I guess <laughs> digging deep here Braun off the end of the bat Carpenter to second for one and the Cardinals turn two to get Wainwright out of the inning however the Brewers score twice a run in on a double by Gomez another on an error and it's 5 2 Milwaukee Two now took a lead in the sixth, scored two more in the seventh as we head to the bottom of the seventh. And we hit 537 Central. And a reminder the Milwaukee Bucks will start at 6 p.m. If our game is still going, then uh, you can catch the Bucks game, or at least the start of it, on the Fox Sports Wisconsin alternate channel. These are some of the main carriers and where you can find those alternate channels. Bucks are. In Philadelphia tonight after clinching a playoff berth yesterday yep. taking on the 76 or so again uh, the Bucks will start on the alternate channel if we are still in progress here and looks like we might be as we play in the bottom of the seventh inning and now it looks like Jeremy Jeffress who has come into the game to pitch needs a little mound work we'll guarantee now that uh, this game <laughs> won't be over at six o'clock 
Really? <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, the uh, the hole that has been dug up by Wainwright and Garza and company. Well, the Brewers bullpen continues to be a story this year. Will Smith came on to get a strike out of Jason Hayward to finish off the sixth inning, and now it is Jeffress. And for more on the bullpen, let's check in with Craig Kishon. Well, Brian, it's just what Ron Renneke ironically was talking about here before the game about his bullpen. So anxiously awaiting this back end of this bullpen to come out and be in a situation like this you know, with just the one win, no save opportunities. That uh, long awaited debut of these guys being in tight ball games like Broxton K Rod. They spent a lot of money during the offseason making sure this bullpen was going to be something along the line of what the Kansas City Royals put together, what we saw. Uh, World Series uh, San Francisco Giants able to put together as well so that model the Brewers kind of followed a little bit along the line here and finally getting an opportunity here with the lead late in the ball game. Yeah, you got some guys that can uh, rush it up there pretty good the guy on the mound right now one of them Blazik has good velocity Jonathan Broxton can get up there in the mid 90s as you can see Jeffress Jeremy Jeffress numbers outstanding so far in his first four appearances has not allowed a run and three and a third innings. So Jeffress after getting the mound worked on seems to be happy with the results. It's amazing the the grounds crew personnel how fast they can fix these uh, problem areas and I mean the, these fields these major league fields are Beautiful. in such great shape. Yeah. But uh, they have the clay and the tamper, and they come out, and it's just like it's like a NASCAR pit crew. The bucket's back there waiting <laughs> with the right mix, and they get it done quickly. Now the key inning here for Jeffress. Smith faced just the one batter, was pinch hit for. Jeffress will try to get through the seventh. Imperative that he does. Sets up Broxton for the eighth, and then K-Rod for the ninth. Matt Holliday will lead off. Cardinals have the heart of their order coming up. Holiday, Adams, Peralta. Three, four, and five in their batting order. Brewers lead it five to two. Three games are final today in the big leagues. Home openers in New York. City Field with the Mets and the Pirates and Boston. And all three of those teams in their home openers won today. Red Sox beat the Nationals Pirates over the Tigers first loss of the season for Detroit and the Mets beat the Phillies they shut them out to nothing three of the six home openers today the Cardinals are one of those six and the Brewers trying to spoil the party today two and oh to holiday big bouncer out to short gloved by Segura got him oh no he came off the bag. Another poor throw by Segura. Lynn thought he had a toe on the bag, but James Hoy didn't see it that way, and Holiday for now is safe. We'll see about a replay. I think Ron Reddy might want to take a look at that. Well, Segura, very unusual to see him having problems throwing the baseball. I think he got his toe back on the yeah. corner of that bag. We'll see, take a look at it. We'll see what Ron Reddy elects to do. Looks like a they're not going to challenge it. Does he get it right there? I'll tell you what, that's close. Yeah, the Brewers waved the umpires off, basically saying that we, we're we good. We're not going to look at it. Stick with the call on the field. Remember, after the seventh, seventh inning or later, the umpires can go take a look at that if they feel like it was one way or the other. Obviously, they didn't get a good look. Doesn't matter now. Another error. Man, Segura's really had a tough time, and that is very rare. So here's Matt Adams. Yeah, things you just can't do. I mean, you can't give extra outs to any team, particularly you know the division champs, teams that can swing the bats. Brewers have been giving outs to the Cardinals all day. One ball, one strike. They start to wonder now if it's 
Getting in the head of Segura with three bad throws today. I'm sure it is. One of the errors led to a run, led directly to a run. Seems like every time he tries to put a little bit extra on the baseball, he's been misfiring. Segura has just two errors, even though he has the three bad throws. The other one came on a, a potential double play ball, so you can't charge a player with an error assuming a double play. That's why he did not get a third error. But certainly three plays he would tell you he should have made. Hitters count for Adams. Jeffress has to make a good pitch here. On the ground, shoots through, base hit. Holiday will stop around second, and here come the Cardinals now. I think you see that coming, right? Lead off air to start the inning, base hit by Adams. And the Cardinals not going away. A throw from Gomez came in on Holiday and it hit him. Gomez was trying to keep Holiday close and it drilled him right in the leg on a hop. Check this out. Bam. Yeah. Smoked him. Yep. Short hop. Scooter not able to handle it and Holiday wears it. Tying run at the plate now. Johnny Peralta. Five two Brewers lead Cardinals threatening once again. They've had base runners everywhere in this game and now Jeffers throws it away on a wild pitch. Both runners advance. Yeah, Rick Cranitz coming out trying to calm down Jeremy Jeffers. That not even close. That's not even the same area code right there. Lucroy does his best, but all the way back to the screen. A visit from the pitching coach to try to settle him down a little bit. Yeah, sometimes you try a little bit extra hard to get a little bit more on that that breaking pitch, and you end up doing that. Either that, or it just spins out of your hand and doesn't do anything. Second and third, nobody out. Inning started with an error. And then Adams reaches on a single. Peralta takes a strike, 96 with the fastball from Jeffress. It's more like it. Nice fluid delivery. That's when you get your good movement, your good velocity. Two seamer from Jeremy Jeffress. Cardinals don't have very good speed on the base pads right now. Skips in. Lucroy picks it. Two and one. Neil Cotts, the left hander of the bullpen for the Brewers. Brewers have already used Smith. He got out of the last inning. Left handed hitter due up next in John Jay. Two balls and a strike on Peralta. In the air to right. Braun is in, and he can't make the play, and it gets by him. Holiday is in. They're going to send Adams. And the throw goes to second base, and the Cardinals get two. Well, the Brewers are kicking it all over the field today. Yeah. Well, Peralta slices it out there. Ryan Braun plays deep. And not able to keep it in front if he is. Hey, he didn't come too far from catching that baseball. Ball gets by him, and Matt Adams able to score from second base. So now the tying run at second with nobody out. It has been a very poor defensive day for the Brewers. Yeah, no error charge on that one. They give Peralta a double and two RBIs. 5 4 Brewers. Peralta at second base, representing the tying run. Still nobody out. John Jay, the batter.
Drops a bunt down and it is foul. Not a bad idea. Yeah, but as hard as Jeremy Jeffers throws, I guess John Jay figures he's not going to be able to pull the baseball. Wants to get Peralta over to third base with less than two, so drop down a bunt. Jay had a single his last time up, single to right. This crowd is revved up. 47,875. Largest crowd in the Bush Stadium 3 history, they announced. We were still clinging to a lead. After a series of miscues today, see if Jeffers can settle the waters. One ball, one strike. And Jay trying to bunt the runner over, takes ball two. Not bunting this time, and he fouls one off. Yeah, two and one has a count in his favor, and why not? Take a poke at it. But that good movement from Jeffers, he came up with that a couple of years ago, and it's been a difference maker for him. Could use a strikeout here. Jay at the very least trying to hit one to the right side to advance the runner. Two balls, two strikes. And Jay in the left. There's the first out. That's a big one for yep. Jeffress. Peralta has to hold his ground at second base. That's about as good as a strikeout right there. You get the out. You got Peralta still at second. And now it's going to take a base hit to tie it up. One gone for Yadier Molina. I see why John Jay was trying to bunt doing that with that movement and velocity not able to pull it. Molina good opposite field hitter. And right up the middle. Backhanded by Jeanette. He's got plenty of time with Molina running good play for out number two. Peralta does advance to third but there are now two outs in the inning. And a way out of this mess for Jeremy Jeffress. You got Colton Wong coming up the left hander nothing but right handers on that Cardinals bench. Down of Lucor looking in there. Former Brewer Mark Reynolds on the bench. I'd be careful here with this yeah. guy. Yeah I agree. You never want to walk the go ahead run on base. But you got to feel a lot better about Jeffress going after right handed hitters as opposed to lefties. And they will intentionally walk Colton Wong here. Matheny sent Grichik to the mound, or rather to the on deck circle quickly, just to let him know that he's ready to make a move. And that's going to be the matchup that we will see. He's got a lot of power, does Grichik, but strikes out a lot. Now Ron Renicki rarely intentionally walks batters. One of the fewest totals in the big leagues last year, but he's going to take his chances with Grichik, a young hitter. Intentional pass will put the go ahead run at first. 5 4 Brewers, bottom of the seventh. Randall Gritchick is announced. He hit a long home run in Cincinnati. First home run for Gritchick.
closes the book on Adam Wainwright, who, uh, as of right now, is still on the hook for the loss. First and third, two outs. Little tapper. Jeffries has it. And the throw to first is in time, and Jeffries gets out of a mess. An opening error by Segura. A couple of hits. Cardinals get close, but the Brewers still lead. Our shining moment brought to you by Marshfield Clinic. Carlos Gomez with a double down the line, scoring Scooter Jeanette. And then the Brewers. After this error by Wong, scoring the second run of the second inning. Gomez comes around to score the run, and they would need them all. The two runs that score in the seventh at the time gave them a 5-2 lead. Cardinals got two right back in the seventh inning. And it's 5 4 as we go to the eighth. Well, third season in St. Louis for Randy Choate, the off traded guy moved around quite a bit in his career. He's been in the American League, the National League. Gave up a run yesterday. Two lefties down in that Cardinals bullpen. You got Choate and Kevin Segrist, the hard throwing lefty Segrist. So Cho to face Adam Lind. Wainwright goes seven on the hook for the loss here today. Cannot win this game. Brewers with five runs on eight hits against Wainwright. Only four of those runs against Wainwright were earned runs. I beg your pardon. Three of those runs were earned runs. Yeah, the first two were not, right? So seven innings, eight hits, five runs, three earned. He had a walk in four Ks. That's right. No, the second, the one in the second inning was there. The one that went off the glove of Hayward. Well, one of those runs last inning against Wainwright was unearned. Right. Matt Garza gave up two runs, one earned. Get the idea. There's been some defensive breakdowns in this game. Four errors in this game, two apiece. And the Brewers have two more miscues that didn't show up as errors. As Lynn grounds to Adams, Choate is there for him in the first out of the eighth. They make plans to be at Miller Park for Willie Peralta bobblehead day that Sunday, April 26, as the Brewers take on the St. Louis Cardinals. All fans in attendance get a Willie Peralta bobblehead courtesy of U.S. Cellular. Reserve your spot today at Brewers.com. It's going to be one and done for Randy Choate. Matheny. Who loves to play matchup late in game? That's one thing he inherited from Tony Larusa, and he'll play matchup the rest of the way. Take a timeout, and set up the new pitcher.
We head to the eighth inning. And a pitching change here with one away. A reminder that the Bucks game will start on the Fox Sports Wisconsin alternate channel. These are the main carriers and the channels that apply. And then once this game is over, we will pick up the Bucks in progress right here on Fox Sports Wisconsin. So if you're looking for the Bucks, they'll start on the alternate channel at the top of the hour and then slide back over to the main Fox Sports Wisconsin channel in progress. Seth Manus. Out of the St. Louis bullpen, relieving Randy Cho to face one batter and retired Lynn. Off to a slow start. Had a nice season last year for St. Louis. 73 in appearances and a 291 earned run average. And Ramirez to right. Hayward is there. Two outs. Been a wild game today. If you're just getting home and you're picking us up, this is the Cardinals home opener. They've got a packed house, their largest crowd ever, nearly 48,000. And the Brewers have not played well defensively. Neither have the Cardinals. Four errors combined between the two teams. St. Louis has stranded 11 runners on base. Yeah, it could be a lot worse for the crew. Brewers were unable to take advantage of some early opportunities against Wainwright, but when you start to settle through it all, Milwaukee has a 5 4 lead here in the eighth inning. They're in a golden position to spoil the party here on the opening day in St. Louis. And with Broxton and K Rod waiting in the wings. There's Jonathan Broxton getting loose. Give credit to Jeffress for pitching out of a mess, starting with a Segura error in the seventh inning. The crowd was revved up. Even that double by Peralta, which was scored a double in two errors, that's a that's a play Ryan Braun would tell you he should right. have made, yeah. could have made. And Davis defensive swing on Manus, and it's two and two now. Well, nothing else, and you can't catch it. You got to make sure you got to keep it in front of you. Matt Adams would not have been able to score had he been able to do that. Yeah, at the very least, I thought uh, a single. And one RBI single at an error, but that's not how they scored it. That's all right. Well, this is just one you're trying to get to the finish line. And if you can win an ugly game like this, that'll go a long way for confidence. 3 2 pitch, Davis fouls it off. Yeah, you don't get style points, do you? Whoever ends up losing this game is going to be talking to themselves all the way home. Yeah, there's going to be a managerial press conference discussing lost opportunities either way. Renicki and Matheny have had their fair share of frustration. There's a called strike three. Davis is rung up right on the black and Manus makes it a three up three down inning.
for MCW back in Philadelphia. Now a member of the Bucks. There you see Jonathan Broxton on the pitch. As we head to the bottom of the eighth inning, Brewers clinging to a one-run lead. And the top of the order coming up. Brewers have made a double switch here. Just in case you need to go get another reliever. Gerardo Parra will enter the game in left field. So the Brewers tighten up defensively. That puts Parra in the nine spot in the batting order. He'll hit third. On the ground. Diving stop. Segura to his feet. Perfect throw this time. And Carpenter is retired. Good play by Segura. Yeah, so, you know, the less time he has to think about the throw, I guess, the more accurate he's going to be today. Boy, that's a heck of a play by Segura. The last thing you want to see with the top of the order coming up, a leadoff base hit. Segura's throw right on the money, getting him by a step. Yeah, very nice play to get Carpenter, who's been a tough out today. So one out in the eighth. Here is Hayward now. 0 for 4, a couple of K's in his Bush Stadium debut as a Cardinal. But always a power threat at the plate is Jason Hayward. Breaks his bat, finds a hole, a base hit. Man, that's the kind of hitter he is these days, right? I mean, fastball away. And pitch was trying to get on the outside corner, didn't quite get it there to Broxton. And Hayward goes right with it in the left field. So the tying run is aboard. And here is Matt Holiday. Two out of three today. Holiday reached on an error in the seventh. That opened up the inning for St. Louis on that ground ball to Segura. He's got two hits and a walk. Long look from Broxton. Hayward is a base stealer. Be very curious to see how Matheny uses the running game. The Cardinals don't run much outside of Colton Wong, but now that he has Hayward hitting in front of Holiday and Adams, it's going to be interesting to see how the Cardinal skipper manages the running game with those power hitters right. behind him. You got to make sure you make it, particularly down by one run. Broxton trying to get a ground ball double play out of Holiday, and he tied him up. Good fastball there. Down and in. 0 oh 2 the count on Holiday. He will two seam a fastball once in a while. We saw that in spring training. Be careful with the breaking pitch to this guy. He's a very good middle speed hitter. One man out, eighth inning. Brewers up a run. And a swing and a miss. Down he goes. Holiday strikes out. Out number two for Jonathan Broxton. Make quick work of Matt Holiday. Yeah, three pitches. And another two seamer. Watch the way this ball drops. This pitch drops off the table as it gets the home plate. Lucroy short hops it off the dirt and gets a huge out. Two outs for Matt Adams. Big swing and a miss. Boy, you know what he had on his mind. <laughs> wow. And big boy looking to hit one off of that scoreboard out there. Unleashing the hounds. Yeah, normally Broxton's going to force him to fastball, but uh, doing a nice job against Holiday, putting some movement on it. Might not be a bad idea against this guy, too. Adams slices one to left. Par the gold glover is there to make the play. Jonathan Broxton holds serve. A score is eight. Brewers lead it. We go to the ninth.
time of the year. It is 5-4 Milwaukee. Matt Belisle out of the Mike Matheny bullpen here for the ninth inning. He spent the last number of years with the Rockies. Started his career with the Reds. Third appearance for the fastball curveball specialist. Gene Segura leads off for the crew. Followed by Jeanette and then Para. Been kind of an ugly game today, but the Brewers have the lead and terrific inning by Jonathan Broxton to get through the eighth. With a zero on the board, had to go through the heavy hitters, and now Frankie Rodriguez preparing for a potential save situation. Barring a big outburst offensively by the Brewers. I'm for that. I think Frankie would be too. Brewers have gotten good work out of their pen here today. Started with Will Smith. He got Jason Hayward on a strikeout in the sixth inning. That was the end of the line for Garza. Smith came in. He got Hayward and then Jeffress pitched around an error. A couple of misplays defensively. He was able to survive the seventh without giving up the lead. Twelve base runners stranded for the Cardinals. They've had uh, a number of opportunities. It was only stranded four. Segura in the right center field. Hayward closes. Looked like he was fighting with the lights a little bit. Or maybe a sign uh, that is lit up out there. Not sure, but he makes a play for the out. One away. Well, our Miller Life, what's on tap? Remember, tomorrow the Brewers are off. Wednesday, we're back on the air. 6.30 airtime, Fox Sports, Wisconsin. It'll be Lance Lynn and Willie Peralta. Peralta pitched well in his first start of the season against the Rockies. He did. Scooter Jeanette. Scooter has a single and a run scored on his line today. Drove in a run with a ground out in the second. Jam shot makes it 0 and 2. That Belial cutter that has made him such an effective reliever at times in his career. He just continues to pour into strikes. I mean, one after the other. He'll break a lot of left handed bats. And down he goes. Jeanette strikes out. Belial goes to the opposite corner. And on three pitches, Scooter Jeanette, a strikeout victim. Every now and again, he will force even that fastball. And you can see it right here. Right on the outside corner. And Molina able to frame it and get the call. Belial's had a nice career. He's in his 12th season in the big leagues. Facing Gerardo Para now. On the first pitch, Colton Wong bobbles, tries to recover, does so. They got him. Been a tough day defensively for Wong, but he's able to escape that mess. And the Brewers go one, two, three in the ninth. Here we go. Bottom of the ninth. Brewers lead by a run. K Rod time.
Sports on Fox Sports Wisconsin and our Brewers game here presented by Pottawatomie Hotel and Casino. Book your stay now. Ninth inning, one run lead for the crew. Francisco Rodriguez on to try to save it. Yeah, first save opportunity of the year for K-Rod. He did give up a home run in his second appearance of the year. Actually, first appearance of the year and a 450 earned run average has the middle part of the batting order for this St. Louis Cardinal offense. Johnny Peralta will lead off a power hitter and a first ball swinger. K Rod starts him with a wrinkle because of it. He's got a lot of a lot of mileage out of that curveball in his first two appearances. He's been throwing a lot of them and throwing them for strikes. Back up the middle. Oh, he caught it. Francisco Rodriguez somehow makes the play on that. What a catch. Well, I thought that ball was into center field. He just threw the glove up there and somehow the ball landed inside. Wow, what a play that was. It was by go. him. It was. That is uh, good reactions, good instincts from K-Rod to get the first out of the inning. That's a huge break. Even though Jeanette was squeezing the middle with Peralta, I think that was hit hard enough to get through for a base hit. Wow, that was some kind of play. Yep. Big out for Francisco Rodriguez. One gone. Here is John Jay now. 5 4 Brew Crew. Yadier Molina to follow. Jay swings at the first pitch, fouls it off. Jay is one out of four. Had a single to right in the fifth inning. That one's right off the end of the bat. Scooter Jeanette will make the play, and two men are gone here in the ninth. Man, nice pitch. Really pulled the string at 82 miles an hour. And K Rod one out away from save number one. And what a matchup here. Two guys that have been around a long time and have had a lot of success. Francisco Rodriguez against Yadier Molina. Molina is 0 for 3. He's walked today as a strikeout. And a first pitch breaking ball in there for strike one. Able to get ahead 0 and 1 with that curveball. That's huge for K Rod. Guys looking for change ups or fastballs. Francisco Rodriguez sitting on 349 career saves. Only Joe Nathan has more among active pitchers. And Molina on the ground breaks his bat. Segura. One more throw across the diamond. It's true, and that's the ball game. And the Brewers win here today, spoiling the Cardinals' home opener. First save of the year for K Rod makes a winner out of Matt Garza. That's one important game to win. To start yeah, the yeah no kidding. It looked like both of these teams were trying to give it away, but uh, in the end, it was the Cardinals that left 12 runners on. And you got to like the way Matt Garza was able to grind through his start today. He walked five. He really didn't have his good command, but was able to keep the Cardinals off the board. And let's talk about Segura for a minute here. It's fitting that Segura makes the last play after a tough day throwing the baseball. Three, four throws, two of those errors. Good for him to find one right. in the middle of the first baseman's men. He had a little bit of the yips on the glove right there at the end. But uh, again, I mean, the last thing you would expect out of Segura is to have Aaron throws. And today just wasn't his day. Hopefully he's got him out of his system. Great work by the Brewers bullpen. Will Smith, Jeremy Jeffress pitches around some of those miscues. Broxton had a clean eighth inning, and now Francisco Rodriguez 
with his first save of the season and K Rod now 349 career saves. Now the Brewers were able to get some key runs and Gomez, this was actually the first hit that produced a run of the game. That was a double by Gomez in the seventh inning that brought in Scooter Jeanette. Yeah, Brewers with a single run in the sixth and then two in the seventh. And you can see Luke Croy avoiding injury. I mean, that could have easily been a twisted ankle or maybe a jammed up knee, but uh, and able to score a run on an error. So two errors by both clubs here today. And it's uh, very uncharacteristic, particularly for the Cardinals, who were one of the better defensive clubs in all of baseball last year. Nice win for Ron Renneke and the crew. They go to two and five, a 5-4 win, and it's time to Watch a little NBA basketball. Let's check in with Jeff Grayson. He'll get you there.